Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and we are here with something a little bit different today. Rather than go into a specific question, I want to delve into a very important part of your amateur radio receiver, and that's the automatic gain control. And let's just talk about why it's there, how it works in general terms, not getting into any math or anything, but I think you'll find this interesting. Let's take a look at the charts. Let's talk first about what is automatic gain control. The original name for it was automatic volume control, which it really better describes what it is. But an automatic volume control is done at audio frequency. The automatic gain control is not done at the audio frequency it's done earlier in the system. Basically, what we're trying to solve is a few problems. Different signals can have very different received levels. So while listening to signals on a non-AGC receiver, and there are some QRP receivers out there that do not have any kind of AGC, if a new signal comes in that's very strong, it can greatly overpower the wanted signal, actually causing <laughs> a nearly painful level in the earphones. Ask me how I know. Also, received signals can vary widely doing to fading. So the idea of the AGC is to keep it at a relatively constant level. Very loud stations can cause receiver stages to overload, causing distortion, so you want to turn down the gain when you are receiving those signals. Now, let's just take a look at a very simplified block diagram of a Super Hat receiver. Have an antenna going into an RF amp, a mixer with a local oscillator. The output frequency of that is the input to the IF amp, okay? And all, there's often several IF amps in string here. goes into some sort of a demodulator. I'm going to assume that we're doing like single sideband, so we need what's called a beat frequency oscillator, which beats with that incoming signal. And then out of here comes audio going into an audio amp and out to your ear. So we have RF, IF, and audio. Now, a volume control controls the audio amplifier, okay? But if you go in here, now this one shows it coming out of the audio loop. It could be coming from right here, which is a little more common. But there's a detector, a separate detector. And what this detector is trying to do is just kind of grasp the envelope of the signal. And then there's a low pass filter because you're not wanting the automatic gain control to operate on every up and down of a received signal, but rather on the averages over a period of time, okay? Then there's an amplifier of some sort, and then we feed the output of that amplifier to the RF amplifier and all of the IF amplifiers. And so this is controlling these, and it will drop the gain of these if this system shows that the received level is too high. Now you can also take your signal to the detector from over here prior to the demodulator, but there are different ways of implementing this. But the point is just this. When a stronger signal is heard, it will lower the gain of the RF amp and the IF amps, all of them, so that what's coming into the demodulator is well within its capabilities to demodulate, and it sends that on to the audio amp. Now, obviously, there are complexities, but let's take a look at this. I'm, I'm just going to take a little part of this, and we're going to take this part right here, okay? Recognizing we have an AGC signal coming in here, through this detector and low-pass filter, and it comes up and down, and we're going to use it to vary the gain of these. So, we take a look at this. The magnitude of the voltage on this line is a representation of signal strength, and this is used to lower the gain of the RF amp and the intermediate frequency amplifiers, okay? Now, what else can we do with it? Well, since it is a representation of signal strength, why don't we measure it? Here's an S-meter, okay? It's actually measuring the AGC voltage. And as this voltage goes up, the magnitude of the voltage goes up, the S-meter goes up. Now, there is a rough standard for this. S9 is minus 73 dBm at the antenna 
input to the radio. Or if you have a high impedance input, like in older receivers, they just talk about 50 microvolts. 50 microvolts across 50 ohms is minus 73 dBm, okay? Each S unit is supposed to be about six dBm of power, okay? So this voltage right here will operate your S meter. This voltage, by the way, is often negative. So it'll come down in here and lower the gains. This measures the magnitude of the voltage. When the signal is stronger, it causes the gain of these amplifiers to go down. If you hear a strong signal, you'll probably notice that the background noise goes down too, okay? While the signal seems relatively constant. Here's another use for it. Suppose we forcibly change the voltage on this line. We have some source of power here. I show it as positive, but it could be negative. And an adjustable control that when you turn it up, you're simulating a higher magnitude voltage coming out here and affecting the gain. So if you turn this up, the AGC voltage magnitude increases and the gain goes down. Now, what we call this control, RF gain. Yes, on a receiver with AGC, what you are controlling with RF gain is not some sort of gain on the input to the RF amp, but rather the AGC system. This increases the magnitude of this voltage. Now, there are some time constants in here. The attack time is how long it takes for the AGC to activate. It's usually pretty fast to protect your ears, okay? The decay time is variable. It's the time it takes for the AGC circuit to return to normal again. And you can select fast, medium, and slow on most receivers, okay? If you look down here at the function button, we go here to find the AGC. You have here, if you click on it once, you go AGC fast to mid, another time goes mid to slow, another time comes back around here to fast, okay? Now, if you go in further, the way you go in further, by the way, is to hold this down for two or three seconds, and it'll go into this screen, where it shows fast, medium, and slow. And you can simply click on one of these to invoke it, okay? Now, here's the thing. If you use the tuning knob, the main tuning knob, while you have one of these selected, you can change the time constant, okay? The way you get back to the default is by long pressing the default key. That's not definition, it's default to go back to the default values. Okay, notice that fast here is pretty quick. It comes right back in less than the time it takes for your brain to register something. So it's almost instantaneous. So if you're doing like CW and you want the thing to recover immediately, you can do that. Mid is for a different use. Let's take a look at what's in the ICOM manual. You can select these AGC time constants. For single sideband, you'd normally use mid or slow, okay? One of the nice things about the slow is a strong signal, if you're talking to it, will kind of keep the background stuff out of the way. But you can change it to any one of these values, including off. For CW and RIDI, a lot of people do fast. I don't like fast. I usually use mid, but you can try all of them because 0.1 seconds is nearly immediate recovery, okay? And if you've got some softer signals in the background, I kind of like to keep those out of the way. AM is sort of useful. This is just tracking the carrier level, okay? And FM, it's fixed. FM is available on this radio on both 10 meters and 6 meters. Okay, so when would you use AGC? And I've used this trick many times. If you're working a loud single sideband station, turn down the RF gain to the point where your loud station stays the way you want it, but it will cause weaker signals to go away. If you're working a loud CW station, change the time constant to medium or slow so that the other signals tend to say, stay in the background. Now, if you've got something else that's, quote, capturing the AGC, in other words, in the same band or a nearby signal, 
uh, you can use a faster time constant so that the wanted station comes back pretty quickly. Another thing that you can do is turn the AGC off. You can turn it off if the AGC action can distort digital waveforms. So try turning the AGC off for FT8 and things like that. Because if there's a strong signal in there, it'll start punching on the AGC, which will distort other signals a little bit, especially phase modulated signals such as PSK31. Now, when you turn the AGC off, you can hear the weakest of the weak. So for DXing, contesting, etc., you can turn it all the way off. However, be prepared for unreasonably loud signals to enter the headphones, okay? Okay, there you have it. We've taken a look at the receiver AGC. Now, I know the normal way that you receive on your receiver is to turn the RF gain all the way up. Now what that does is it means that the AGC will control the RF gain. If you have a loud signal, it'll bring it down. And as it does, it increases the AGC voltage, which shows up on your S meter as a larger S unit. And so there you have it. Any questions, put them in the comments or send them to askdave at ARRL.org. That's askdave, all one word, at ARRL.org. And until we next meet, 73.